Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 8th of September. India and Japan agree to enhance military drills and defense cooperation. Women stranded in Pakistan floods take risky trips to give birth. And Afghanistan's foreign ministry criticizes presence of U.S. drones in Afghan airspace. And now for all the details. India and Japan will deepen cooperation on defense with India inviting investment by Japanese companies and plans for joint military exercises involving their air forces, the two sides said on Thursday. This came after two plus two talks between the defense and foreign ministers of both the countries in Tokyo. India and Japan said on Thursday that they would deepen defense cooperation and plan to hold joint military drills involving their air forces. This came after a meeting between India's Defense Minister Rajnath Singh and his Japanese counterpart Yasukazu Hamada in Tokyo during two plus two talks, also involving the foreign ministers of both the countries. Singh in a joint press statement said, enhancing the defense equipment and technological cooperation between India and Japan is one of our key priority areas. We are happy to note that our air, force, our air forces are working closely for early conduct of the inaugural Air Force fighter exercise. Enhancing the defense equipment and technological cooperation between India and Japan is one of our three key priority areas. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar said, Strengthening foreign policy coordination is essential to realize the full benefits of the substantial convergence in their interest and outlook. India, like Japan, is bolstering its military to tackle what it sees as increased security threats. Both countries are increasingly wary of China's growing military might and assertiveness. In the East China Sea, China claims a group of uninhabited Japanese-administered islets. India, which last week commissioned its first home-built aircraft carrier, is involved in a standoff with Chinese forces on their remote Himalayan border. India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said importing Russian oil was part of New Delhi's strategy to manage inflation and that other countries were also following similar strategies. Russian oil share in India's crude basket increased to 12 to 13 percent within a couple of months of discount compared with about 2 percent of Russian component in February. India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said on Thursday that importing Russian oil was part of the country's inflation management strategy and that other countries were doing something similar. Despite Western pressure, India has not condemned Russia's February invasion of Ukraine, instead calling for a diplomatic solution to the crisis and an end to violence. Russia has for decades been India's biggest foreign supplier of defence hardware. India's crude oil shipments from Russia have jumped to between 12% and 13% of imports from all sources since February, from about 2% before then, the finance minister said. India is the world's third biggest consumer and importer of crude oil and Sitaraman said Prime Minister Narendra Modi deserved credit for balancing trade and other ties with various countries. And that's where I give credit to the statesmanship of the Prime Minister to make sure globally that we did keep our relationship with all countries but yet managed to manage till today managed to get the Russian fuel which is what Japan is doing today which is what probably Italy and some other countries are doing. Indian government ministers have repeatedly said the country needed to keep buying energy from Russia to keep inflation under check. Indian retail prices in July were 6.71% higher than a year earlier. Although the annual inflation rate has now fallen for three months, it has exceeded the central bank's tolerance band of 2% to 6% for seven months in a row. 
The news from Pakistan. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan made two significant withdrawals totaling rupees 8 million from an account of his PTI party in March 2013. A probe by investigative agencies has revealed. This comes a day after Khan admitted he also sold out four foreign presents that he had received during his tenure as the Prime Minister. A probe by Pakistan's Federal Investigation Agency has revealed that former Prime Minister and opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan made two significant withdrawals, totaling Rs 8 million from an account of his party in March 2013, local media reported on Thursday. Khan verified the transactions using his own national identification card, the News International reported. The probe officials also said that 52 transactions from five bank accounts belonging to the PTI should have raised a red flag. This comes after Khan admitted on Wednesday that he sold out four foreign presents that he had received during his tenure as the Prime Minister in response to the Election Commission of Pakistan in the Tosha Khana case. In his 60-page reply to the poll body, Imran Khan maintained that he had not hidden the assets and the charges against him were false and baseless and politically motivated. Moreover, he said that the Election Commission cannot disqualify a person under Article 62 1 f of the Constitution. The PTI chief maintained that the sale of the gifts that he had procured from the state treasury after paying Rs 21.56 million fetched about 58 million rupees. Parts of Pakistan seemed like a sea. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif said on Wednesday after visiting some of the flooded areas that cover as much as a third of the South Asian nation. 12 more deaths took the toll from days of rain to 1,355 on Thursday. The Indus River was experiencing its worst flooding at the Kotri Barrage, north of Hyderabad, authorities said. The Information Minister for Pakistan, Sindh Province, Sir Jeel Inam Memon, said on Wednesday that the Indus River was experiencing its worst flooding at the Kothri Barrage, north of Hyderabad. Memon made the comments in Hyderabad a day after thousands of flood victims affected by the overflowing Indus on the outskirts of the city took refuge in makeshift huts on a dry patch of land. The Kothri Barrage is located between Hyderabad and the smaller city of Jamshoro to the northwest. The floods cover as much as a third of the South Asian nation, where 18 more deaths took the toll from days of rain to 1,343. As many as 33 million of a population of 220 million have been affected in a disaster blamed on climate change. Flooding has left hundreds of thousands homeless and caused losses of at least 10 billion US dollars, officials estimate. Many of those affected are from Sindh, where Pakistan's largest freshwater lake is dangerously close to busting its banks, even after having been breached in an operation that displaced 100,000 people. Women stranded in floods are taking risks to give birth. 27-year-old Rubina Malla is one of tens of thousands of pregnant women, displaced by historic floods that have inundated close to a third of the country. Naila Kureshi, a gynecologist at a hospital, said its outpatient department was receiving around 150 pregnant women each day from surrounding areas. United Nations Population Fund's latest assessment is that 138,000 women in need of humanitarian assistance due to the floods are pregnant, and 40,000 are expected to deliver their babies in September. The United Nations has called for 160 million US dollars in aid to help the flood victims. But with more rain expected in the coming month, the situation could worsen further, a top official of the United Nations Refugee Agency has warned. 
Moving on to news from Afghanistan. Acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaki expressed criticism over reports of U.S. drones that are flying above Afghanistan and called on Washington to stop the violation of Afghan airspace. Authorities earlier said that Pakistan had allowed U.S. drones to use its airspace to access Afghanistan, which Pakistan's Foreign Minister denied. This comes in wake of recent U.S. drone strike in Kabul that killed Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri in July. Expressing criticism over reports of U.S. drones flying above Afghanistan, Acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaki on Wednesday called on Washington to stop the violation of Afghan airspace, saying, this is against international norms and also against the Doha Agreement. He asked the international community to put pressure on the U.S. to stop violating Afghan airspace. In reference to the U.S. announcement of killing the Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri in Kabul, Muttaki said, that the former has yet to provide details or proof of the killing. The United States killed Zwahiri with a missile fired from a drone while he stood on a balcony at his hideout in July, in the biggest blow to the Al-Qaeda since U.S. Navy SEALs shot dead Osama bin Laden more than a decade ago. The Taliban earlier said that Pakistan had allowed U.S. drones to use its airspace to access Afghanistan, which Pakistan's foreign minister denied. Pakistani authorities have previously denied involvement in or advanced knowledge of a drone strike that killed Zwahiri. Afghan Acting Minister of Defense Mullah Mohammad Yaqub told a news conference in Kabul last month that American drones had been entering Afghanistan via Pakistan. Bangladesh's jute markets are now bustling with buyers looking for a bargain. Known as the Golden Fiber, jute is one of the major cash crops in parts of Bangladesh, including Munshi Ganj district, some 37 kilometers from national capital Dhaka. Following adequate rainfall in recent weeks, harvesting of jute plants got momentum in the district and elsewhere in the country. The newly harvested jute fiber has started hitting local markets, which are now abuzz with both buyers and sellers amid a major shift in consumer demand for eco-friendly products that is driving the demand for jute-based products globally. Both jute growers and traders are happy to see the hard-won harvest, especially after months of floods since May, damaged the standing crops initially. Bangladesh is the world's second-largest jute producer, with an estimated annual output of 1.6 million tons in 2019, showed data from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. The country is also a top exporter of jute and jute-based products in the world, with exports totaling about 1 billion US dollars annually. Exiled Tibetans in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala on Wednesday held a special prayers for the well-being and long life of Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama was welcomed with traditional dance performances as he arrived to take part in the prayer ceremony at the Buddhist temple attended by a large number of people, including monks, devotees and foreigners. India hosts a large community of Tibetans. The Dalai Lama fled from Lhasa for asylum in India in 1959 after an abortive uprising against Chinese rule. He had since lived mostly in Dharamshala in the northern state of Himachal Pradesh, where his supporters run a small government in exile and advocate Tibet's autonomy by peaceful means. People in India's southern Kerala state celebrated the annual Harvest Festival of Onam on Thursday with fervor and gaiety after a two-year-long COVID-induced hiatus. People thronged temples, decorated their homes with flowers and took part in cultural events to mark the occasion. People in India's southern Kerala state on Thursday thronged temples wearing traditional clothes to offer prayers on the occasion of the Harvest Festival of Onam. The festival traditionally celebrates the homecoming of mythical king Mahabali, who is believed to come from the netherworld to check on his citizens. Every year, those who celebrate the Harvest Festival bath, offer prayers and decorate their homes with flowers. People also participate in fun activities like dances and swinging. Several cultural events were also organized on the occasion, which witnessed youngsters taking part in music and dance competitions with much enthusiasm along with grand feasting. The grand celebrations were marked after two years of COVID-induced hiatus. My family enjoying very well 
and uh, I'm very happy after two years I'm celebrating this Onam, the pandemic, the flood, all coming to our life and making us very sad and this Onam is very graceful to me. Onam is greatly awaited across Kerala, often referred to as God's own country, as it is believed the Harvest Festival heralds prosperity and happiness in society. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.